welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast, Week 9. Um, Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, Dave Eddy. What's up, man? Hey, how come I don't get a cool title like, you know, you're founder of Fantasy Six Pack. Why can't I be like the Fantasy Six Pack bitch or something? I mean, we can we can make that happen if you really wanted to. <laughs> I mean, it, it's better than nothing. I mean, I'd like to, you know, I, I I want to be I want to have a title, man. You're the co-host of the Fantasy Football Last Call podcast. Yeah, it's nah. It's not doing it's not doing <laughs> we'll, it. For we'll, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Dude, how am I going to get how am I going to get chicks with that fucking thing, man? <laughs> Like, hey, baby, I uh, I co-host a fantasy football uh, podcast. Yeah, I don't think we're really in this for the chicks. <laughs> I don't, not, I don't think it works you, like that's that. That's how you talked me into it. Um, all right. Uh, I got nothing on that one, man. <laughs> yeah, busted. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, so, start of the third quarter of the Patriots versus the Ravens. Just got underway here. Um, Baltimore got a big lead early on. New England's creeping back though. It's 17, 13 Patriots got the ball to start the second, the second half here. But, um, it's, it's been an interesting one. This has not been the new England defense, you know, destroying the other team that we've gotten the few first half of the season for them. But I think that was to be expected, right? I mean, they played some, they played a pretty cupcake schedule early on. I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we've we've talked about that um, over and over again. But at the same time, I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that, um, you know, there really isn't anybody else like Lamar Jackson. So this is the first time they're seeing him. Uh, It's got to be really hard to to put a, you know, a scout player in there in practice to, to replicate what he can do. You pretty much just have to put like a running back back there and let him just run around like crazy. Yeah, that's true. We'll see what happens. I mean, they've gotten a couple turnovers already, so we'll see if uh, you know. We'll see if they can pull it out. I know it's it's definitely one of the more exciting Sunday night games, that's for sure. So, all right, man. Well, let's get let's get rolling here with these game recaps. We'll start with the game in London, nice and early this morning. Jags versus Texans. Uh, Texans took this one twenty six to three. On the Jag side of the ball, I mean, the three points pretty much just that, – that's the whole story, man. Like, that's right there, bad. Um, you know, Minshew threw for 30 yards, but, you know, coughed it up a couple times, threw a couple interceptions. Ooh, Baltimore just got a uh, defensive touchdown. There you go. Um, Fournette, you know, didn't really do much. I mean, thankfully he got – he caught five passes, but – I mean, I think the story here is Minshew. I mean, Foles is getting healthy and, and should start next week. You know, there was kind of rumbles that, like, they might keep Minshew in there at first. But I think after today, it's definitely not going to happen. Yeah, I would expect that, you know, Foles is going to come back. At, if Minshew would have been able to maintain that, you know, pace he had right off the bat, then, yeah, it definitely would have been a, a tough call. But, um, you know, for a team that – theoretically still has some playoff hopes i I would i would imagine that yeah we're probably going to see them give Foles the next chance which probably is you know the best thing for that offense anyways yeah it'll be really interesting to see if you know dd westbrook stock goes back up and and dj shark you know because to start the season dd was the was the big guy that everybody wanted and then Minshew comes in and, and has the instant connection with shark so uh, it'll be very interesting to see how the dynamic of that offense changes when Foles is in there. So, just something yeah, to keep an eye on. Yeah, on the Texans side, um, you know Watson's overall line was good. Um, you know he thankfully got a, a a late touchdown to kind of boost his stats, um, and it went to D Hop finally. <laughs> um, you know, hide a lot, a lot of yardage here. This the story for me though, coming out of this game is just how much more Duke Johnson is being used now. You know, he ran the ball seven times, got in the end zone, caught five for sixty eight. I mean, is this is this a guy that we can like legit put in like a flex spot now going forward, or, or is this kind of a, a one off? Looks like he's been um, kind of creeping up week weekly. You know, week in and week out, like getting more involved. I've noticed. 
I mean, if, if anything, um, I would say it's more got to do with two words, and those two words are Will Fuller. I think that, you know, there's extra targets there for um, for everyone. Now, I know Fails has been getting um, a good chunk of those, but I don't think that Duke Johnson, barring a Carlos Hyde injury, is going to really be somebody that, you know, you're going to want to rely on um, definitely in season long, but um, – you know, even in even in even in DFS, I just don't think he's got a very high ceiling. Yeah, I mean, he's a dynamic player. Just to, you know, I, I think this is kind of the ceiling for Duke Johnson. So, unfortunately, yeah. so yeah, I kind yeah, of agree yeah, with you. Exactly. But I think it's you know, I think especially you know with a couple of heavy bye weeks coming up, you know, Duke Johnson is not the worst option to have at the end of your bench. So, um, skins and bills. Bills won 24 to 9. Dwayne Haskins gets his first NFL start ever, and ew. Um, it was not good. Haskins, 144 yards, 15 for 22. Just bad. AP was good, though, man. AP looked real solid. 18 for 108. Even caught a pass for 22. There's really just nothing here, though. I mean, this whole offense is pretty much off the table for me, you know. Adrian Peterson is going to have a game or two like this, but this, I don't know. I mean, do you got anything here? We can just move over, over to the Bills. No, nope, Bills time. Yeah. Uh, so on the Bills, I, I was a heavy believer in Josh Allen this week, and I, he did all right. Um, you know, he didn't lose the game, right? I mean, he, he did basically what he's been doing all year. I, I kind of thought he'd have a bigger game is kind of what I, I thought, though. Um it's tough with him, and I mean, we talk about this on, on the balls deep um, as well. At least I do, and I've said it probably on here too. Is you know, Allen's never going to be a guy that's that's going to win you a matchup. Um, I also don't think he's ever really going to be a guy who's going to lose anything for you because you know your expectations aren't sky high for him. Mm-hmm. So uh, a game like this, even against the Redskins, I mean, it's a little bit disappointing, I guess, because oh. you know he didn't really get much on the ground. Yeah, but he did. He did Martin, score though. I missed that. Um, I, I did notice. Yeah, he scored on the ground though, so that that helps well, for sure. I was, yeah, but usually he gets a few more yards. Yeah, um, you know, 160 yards pass. I mean, you know, I figured game script for this game was going to be a good chunk of Frank Gore, um, as much you know, Singletary as you know they could slide in there. And Singletary um, dominated it, dude. He was I know. awesome. And, and I actually, I. I I was debating on how many or how much exposure Singletary I wanted because I I, I thought if it was going to be a closer game, um, you know, not a blowout that Gore would get, you know, a good chunk of carries and Singletary would just get mixed in. But I figured if it was a blowout that they would have no reason to not give Singletary the ball more. So that was kind of more of my thought process. But um, I, I did end up with some exposure to Singletary and DFS, but I was really debating on a lot more. And I, I guess I should have, but oh, well. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We're talking about Singletary. Um, so on the Fantasy Six Pack Hour podcast uh, this past week, we had Bob Lung on, and he does the Fantasy Football Consistency Guide every year. And um, I was pretty surprised to see he gave us a, a, a mid-season update report before the show. I was really surprised to see, like, Devin Singletary, like 75% consistent for the year um, in the games that he's played. Um, so that to me kind of went, you know, I, I, I think this offense, this run game is going to start going through Singletary. So I wasn't totally surprised on this. Um, so I, I mean, and it's almost getting to the point now where like, I think you can almost safely drop Gore. I mean, still 11 carries. That's still pretty good. But like, I mean, he's just like, he looked, he looked, he looked old in this game. Like he wasn't, he wasn't doing anything. So it was unfortunate. Um, Vikings Chiefs here. Uh, this is a good game, man. Chiefs win 26, 23, um, on the Vikings side here. We've got cousins 19 for 38. Not great. Two twenty. did get three touchdowns though. Um, cook didn't really get it going. Diggs was terrible. Um, Thielen got hurt again, you know, early left the game with, a hamstring, you know, uh, re-injured again. So that that's bad news. Like when you re-injure the hamstring, that means he's going to probably be out a while. Um, and then 
you know the t- the touchdowns though. I mean, the touchdowns were just like all over the place. Rudolph, Abdullah, BC Johnson. I mean, nobody anybody was really using, right? So yeah, I, and that's I, what gets frustrating about you know fantasy football sometimes is. I mean, you know, who would have guessed that? You know, that's how it was going to work out. You know, um, especially with Cook. You know, you figure Cook against that Chiefs defense is is going to feast, and then you know, you know, even with even with Thielen being on the field and injured, you would think that Diggs would, you know, pick up some slack. And then when Thielen goes out, you would think, well, Diggs is really going to probably, you know, get some nice targets and and have a good game and one catch for four yards. I mean, you you couldn't have you couldn't have wrote that script. Nah, it's it's unfortunate. I think it's kind of a. I, I don't expect that to be the norm. Uh, nor do I think his you know thirteen catch for one hundred fifty yards was going to be the norm anymore. But you know. I definitely, definitely better than today. So just kind of chalk it up to a, a, a bad game on the Chiefs side. Um, you know, Matt Moore, whatever. I mean, this will probably this looks like it'll be his last game. Mahomes was was bouncing around afterwards, so he looks like he's good to go. Um, Damian Williams, man, twelve for one twenty five in a touchdown. Now, granted, that was a ninety one yard run that did it. I don't know if you saw the replay of that. Did you have you seen the replay of that play? Um, I did not. So he takes off right, and he's running, and I guess they, you know, how they always say how fast people are running. He was running like twenty oh. miles an hour. And then Tyree Kill just comes running up behind him and catches him and passes him right before they. So he was he was clocked at like twenty two and a half miles per hour. That is ridiculously fast. Um, yeah, I, I did hear about the. the <laughs> yeah. so I guess in retrospect, I did see the very very end of that, but um, but I didn't see the whole play. Yeah, um, but man, I don't know. Is, it, is this kind of the the repassing of the torch back to Damian Williams in this backfield? I mean, I wouldn't bet on it. Um, I mean, especially I mean, especially in DFS. But um, I don't tend to believe things until I see him a couple of times. So season long, I guess it would be hard not to you know have him and McCoy uh, rostered. But I wouldn't really feel confident starting either one of those in any given week until you see that something, you know, has changed, you know, that their, their game plan has gone to say, Hey, I think Damian Williams is going to get the carries and McCoy will be the change of pace guy. So, um, I wouldn't trust it until I see it. Yeah. I, I I'm with you. I only own McCoy in, in one dynasty league that I'm in and I don't use him unless I right. have to. So, uh, Tyreek Hill balled out, and that's kind of the end of that there. So, um, Jets Dolphins. Uh, this was actually an exciting game. <laughs> Shockingly, um, the Dolphins win their first football game, uh, probably their only football game. Well, they do play the Jets again, so maybe they get a second one. Twenty six twenty four. Uh, on the Jets side, it's it's bad, man. Um, you know, Darnold just. Not looking good. The offensive line, I think, is really where the issues are here. They can't protect anybody. They can't open up room for Bell. Uh, I mean, 17 for 66. That's not good, man. Thankfully, he's just a target hog. You know, he just gets all the checkdowns. That's saving his fantasy you know, value big time in PPR leagues. Um, but, you know, I mean, what? how worried are we about Bell at this point? I mean, like... He couldn't even get it really going against the Dolphins. Yeah, I don't know if if worried really is the word at this point. I think I think worried um, would be you know if he'd been having some good success and then all of a sudden you know he, he just fell off. So this has kind of been what we see all year. Uh, he's getting plenty of plenty of uh, you know shares as far as you know touches. So it's not like he's not getting the opportunities. He yeah, I think isn't able to do a whole lot with them. Um, yeah. I don't know that that's like you said. I don't know if that's his fault exactly. So um, this this may be about the best what you're going to get out of him. I mean, sixty six and um, you know eight catches for fifteen yards. I mean, that's not a bad number of fantasy points. So I, I think that this is about his ceiling. Unfortunately, I mean, he didn't get in the end zone, obviously. So you know, a touchdown or two could really change things. But um, I, I, I don't think you can expect more than this in any given week. Yeah, I think this, myself included, I think people were hoping that, you know, this the schedule kind of 
gets easier for them. It's been pretty rough to start the year. They had a they had like a four game stretch here, minus this not not including this game. That were they were pretty rough on the schedule. So you were hoping that you know them getting the Dolphins twice here in the next few weeks. They get the Redskins. They get the Bengals. They get you know they get some other fairly easy teams. You were hoping that you know they could get things going, and then the very first easy game they get against the Dolphins, and he doesn't just blow up. You're kind of like, Egh. I mean, yeah, you're taking the twenty points in PPR because you know the eight, but you know if you're in a half PPR, that's you know you're you're down to what sixteen, and then so I mean, it, you know, if you're in a standard league, like, ooh, I don't know. It's I think just people were hoping for more is is kind of where I was going with that question. Um. But on the on the Dolphin side here, um, we've got Fitzpatrick with three touchdowns. Really, not a whole lot else. I mean, Preston Williams did okay. Caught, you know, caught two touchdowns. Um, if we want to go a little deeper here, Gasecki had his best game as a pro. 95, 95 yards. You know, hey, maybe, maybe, maybe it's gonna finally work out for him. But I don't know. Um, no, but they got a lot of they got a lot of mouths to feed over there. They got they got a good receiving core. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just you know it's they've shipped off so many, so many players on you know in so many important spots where you know all along the line and everything else is just you know it's it's really going to hinder that that team. But I mean I don't think anybody's really going. Oh yeah, I'm going to start the Dolphins players now, so we can just probably just move on. Uh, Bears and Eagles the next game. Bear uh, Eagles twenty two, Bears fourteen. You know, a lot of people thought this was like a get right game for maybe Trubisky in this passing offense, and man, did it go the other way. Um, you know, the Eagles have been passed on pretty easily this year, and Trubisky did not take advantage. Ten for twenty one for a buck twenty five. That is it. Uh, Allen Robinson was only able to snag one catch for six yards i mean ugh. what do we do man what do we do with this team oh hey man i think you're muted Oh uh, yeah, so we had a little technical difficulties, but we we're back up. Uh, so yeah, this this Bears offense, Dave. What what do you think, man? Um, I think they're terrible. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, up until what two weeks ago, um, I was sitting there praising Allen Robinson for you know not setting the world on fire, but but for being very consistent. Mm-hmm. And then he comes out and has a couple of duds. Um, you know, no worse than today. So. I mean, I guess I still will trust him um, for now, but and if one catch for six yards against that Eagles defense is not what I was expecting. No, nah, I mean Trubisky's just really regressing in the wrong, you know, in the wrong direction here. I mean, I guess the one good takeaway is David Montgomery is starting to show some life here. He's gotten in the end zone twice today, but it's not it's not great. But I don't know, man. Um, on the Eagles side, I mean it. <sighs> And Jack, Djax was back, and so I was a little high on this offense today. But he only played one series. But I mean, they 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 didn't do bad. I mean, once was okay. Um, you know, Howard in the revenge game went nineteen for eighty two and a touch. So um, I think the uh, the big takeaway though is is that Ertz finally went off. Man, uh, nine for one hundred two and a touch. This is something owners of Zach Ertz have been dying for for weeks it feels like man um you know goddard was getting a lot of a lot of love lately and he's been the better player honestly for the last few weeks so um so yeah your, your thoughts here are on earths and and you know is this see back is this it you know or is no i i yeah i mean i think that i think that Ertz is okay um i think that Ertz and and levy bell were in very similar situations kind of where um, you know, this was the week that that was going to say a lot. So, you know, if, if Bell didn't go off, then I think, you know, you know what you're getting from him. And it would have been the same thing with Ertz. If Ertz didn't go off against, um, you know, the Bears 
defense because they, they don't do so well against tight ends. So um, I had a lot of exposure in DFS to Ertz today because I, I, I truly did believe in him this week. Um, so it paid off good for me. Um, but if you would have been season long, um, today was the day where I think you can rest easy for the most part. Um, now it could have been the other way. So, you know, if he'd have went out there and had, you know, three catches for 20 yards, touchdown or not, I would have said you might want to really rethink your situation. Yeah. Um, Colts and Steelers. Steelers 26, Colts 24. Biggest news here is Jacoby Brissett injured early on, and uh, Brian Hoyer had to come in and didn't do too bad, man. 17 for 26, buck 68, and three touchdowns. Um, without, you know, this was without TY. And and so it's not working with a whole lot, you know. So so filled in pretty nicely. Um, Marlon Mack, uh, kind of okay day. Um, so you know because there was no Ty, somebody that's receiving core had to step up, and it was Pascal, man, five for seventy six and a touch. But what do we think about this offense going forward if Brissett has a missed time? And it sounds like he he might. I mean, it's like a knee injury, so not a whole lot of info yet. But it sounds like it um, could be week to week. Yeah, why we were um, talking but before we started to record here a little bit, um, they had on TV that right now they they consider it to be some sort of an MCL thing, and they're they're considering him to be week to week right now. Oh, so okay, I did not I, catch so, that. So okay. I don't know if that means he'll you know maybe miss the next game, but it doesn't sound like it's it's super serious at this point, which is mm-hmm. a good thing for everyone. I mean, uh, you know. Yeah. Any team losing their their quarterback isn't really going to help anybody out, so nobody wants to see that. No, absolutely not, man. I mean, uh, my boy Ebron needs to have a, a quarterback to throw to. Him, so <laughs> uh, that's the first thing I, I sent his I sent him a text as soon as I saw that, and I was like, man, I I hope you're going to be all right. Big dog got to eat. It's president of the uh, Ebron fan club, right? <laughs> Doing my duties, man. <laughs> All right. On the Steelers side, it, it wasn't pretty, man. Offensively, you know, Mason Rudolph. Not really doing it, and you know, so Juju and, and all those guys really didn't do much of anything. Uh, Connor was out today. The run game was pretty non-existent, but Jalen Samuels caught thirteen receptions of thirteen targets, um, seventy-three yards. So those of you in PPR leagues are loving life right now with Jalen Samuels. But I mean, like. Is he going to be this reliable, you know, if Connor misses more time? Uh, I mean, this reliable? Um, I don't know. I mean, he's not going to catch 13 balls again, but uh, he's also probably not going to get only 10 yards rushing. So, um, I mean, if you look at the math on that, that's what you're looking at in PPR leagues, full point. You're looking at like 21 points. Uh, I mean, that's not like super awesome, obviously, but um, I don't know how much time Connor's going to miss, but either way, you know, Samuels is another case of what I feel like I talk about in some case every week. It's just a a matter of, you know, talent and opportunity. So obviously the kid's talented and, Mm -hmm. you know, he got an opportunity and this this is what you get. So uh, I feel like almost every week lately we've been having somebody that gets hurt and somebody steps in and, you know, basically fills those shoes. So, um, I mean, I would rather have James Conner than, than Jalen Samuels. Oh, but, of course. You know, if you're going to give me Samuels for half the price in DFS, I mean, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Um, Titans, Panthers. Panthers win 30 to 20. Uh, Tannehill, 331 and a touchdown, two picks. Um, and kind of spread the ball around a lot with his receivers, so not, not a ton there. Um, Hunter Henry scored twice, once on the ground, once in the air. The yardage was right around 100 total for him. But, um, I mean, I don't think it was like a landmark day for him, you know, especially, you know, if he hadn't gotten the end zone, we'd be looking at this going, this isn't a very good game. (laughs) So... But I, I don't think there's anything really to worry about there. I don't think anybody was really relying on anybody in this passing game, except for maybe Jonah Smith, just because people are desperate at tight end. But um, Hunter Henry, you know, you're just going to be happy with the touchdowns and move on. I think um, on the Panthers side, Kyle Allen started again for Cam Newton, and of course, you know, we heard again this late this past week that it now he's going to go back and get second opinions and stuff like that again because. 
they're looking it's not really healing um go figure a list frank injury not healing um i'm not surprised one bit um but you know he he did okay you know nothing great there for, for kyle allen but you know mccaffrey again just a stud um 146 yards on the ground, two touchdowns, 20 yards in the air in a touch. Just, I mean, he's he's it, man. Like, if you got him, you're in good shape. I have a feeling. So yeah, for sure, man. I mean, I I actually paid up in DFS for a lot of uh, McCaffrey this week. He was at 10K on DraftKings, and I, I thought a lot of people would fade him because that's a crazy high price. Um, but he's worth he, it, man. Yeah, he, well, <laughs> I mean, he crushes it. What he did to to make it worth it, but I mean, you know, he did. So, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, last week, you know, against the Niners is when I thought, okay, this is the one time where I'm not going to touch him. I'll let other people spend money on him, and and when he, you know, lit up the 49ers, that that's all I need to see. You know, I mean, he he's, I mean, obviously in a season long, you. I mean, he could be on one leg, and he's still going to be a guy you're probably going to run out there, anyways. Um, but yeah, McCaffrey is just unreal, and I, that's just a you know a weekly thing we talk about with him. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so move on here. Raiders, Lions. Raiders win thirty-one to twenty-four. And dude, I'm sorry, man. I don't know what on earth happened at the end of that game. Like Lions looked like they were going to go down and tie it at the very least, and. I'm sure you yeah, could that, rant for that's like what a thirty. Fan might have thought. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you could rant for thirty minutes as to how ridiculous that last play was, where you know, like mm-hmm. let's take all of our best players off the field and and try to score. What in the hell? Otherwise, though, man, like it was a great game offensively. In the passing, there's no running game anymore. Like this is they're done. Like so. Um, I, said, I said that weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, this is they are over. Like, don't like I. I'm just I'm not even trying to pretend like they have a running game anymore. So this is the Stafford Galladay and Jones show with a little mix of Amendola and every now and then, uh, and they all went off. The, you know, this week four hundred six and three touchdowns for Stafford. Galladay had a hundred and thirty two and a touch. Jones one hundred twenty six and a touch. I mean, this was just. I mean, they were just eating the Raiders alive. There, I mean, I, I don't think we're going to maybe see this good every week, but, I mean, I think you're going to be able to trust these guys more often than not. Yeah, I mean, Lions homer or not, I think that, you know, the Lions would be a team that I'd be rolling out there quite a bit in, in DFS the rest of the year. I mean, th- this was a prime matchup. I know that points-wise it wasn't, you know, spectacular, but, uh, I mean, Stafford had over 400 yards, three touchdowns. Galladay and Don't Jones both had a hundred and a touch, so um, yep. you're not going to get that every week. But um, you know Stafford's going to be reliable. You're going to be able to rely on him. Whether they're doesn't matter if they're ahead, they're behind. It doesn't matter because they can't run the ball. So Stafford's going to get his. Pretty much. Doesn't matter who he's going to throw to. But don't, I'm not even going to say the name of a single Lions running back because I don't want someone to mishear me and, and think that I'm advocating to play anybody. So <laughs> just don't don't touch him, man. Yeah, it's bad. So on the Raiders side, you know, equally is a uh, impressive offensive offensively on that side too. Uh, Carr two eighty nine and two touchdowns. Jacobs went off one hundred and twenty and two touchdowns on the ground. Hunter Renfro got in the end zone. Man, um, the guy that I was kind of pegging as a as a little bit of a sleeper toward the end of the preseason there, uh, six for fifty four and a touch. But yeah, man, uh, it's just. You know, I thought I thought Carr was going to do a little bit more than he did, but you know, you'll take it. I think if if you roll the dice on him this week, which I did in a couple of leagues, I did not want to start Wentz, so I went out and picked up Carr uh, in a couple of those leagues. But um, I mean, I don't know. I don't really know if there's much to take away from this except the fact that you know Jacobs did his thing, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if anything, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't overrate Jacobs' performance too much. Um, as bad as the Lions are at running the ball, they're almost as bad at stopping it. So, um, I mean, he had 28 carries. He had almost as many carries as Carr threw the ball. Yeah. Um, I mean, but I mean, it was effective. I mean, he didn't. I mean, it, it was it, the game pretty much went about the way you thought it would. I guess I would have guessed there might have been a few more points scored, but um, you pretty much got what you thought you were going to get out of the game, except Waller really didn't get targeted yeah I, the lions tend to seem to have a little bit of a number on the tight end i don't know if that's just because 
the receivers are so fucking open all the time or, <laughs> or, or, or what exactly it is. But, um, you know, th- tight ends haven't really been killing the Lions too much. And I thought that Waller may be a little different because um, he's, you know, like, like a lot of the tight ends, you know, top tight ends, he's more of a receiver than a tight end. But, um, yeah, tight ends are a little scary now against the Lions. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm not. I don't. I, uh, I want to comment on your overrating Jacobs thing. I don't think I'm overrating him for all based off this game. I think he's just been a, basically a stud all year. So uh, it's just yeah. a continuation of that. But speaking of continuation, let's let's continue on here. We got uh, Seahawks and Bucks. Seahawks win in overtime, forty to thirty four. This was a pretty exciting game, man. I caught the, I caught the uh, the tail end of it. Um, you know, the, the afternoon, the the late afternoon games, I don't get to watch all of them. Um, I catch the beginning, then go do the dinner thing with the kids, and come back and catch the very end. It seems like every week. So, um, but high scoring game all around here uh, on the Bucks side. You know, Winston three thirty five and two touchdowns. Um, we had our Ronald Jones game today. He scored. Uh, Evans went off again, 12 for 180 and a touch. Uh, Godwin was was solid. It didn't fall in the end zone, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, you'll, you'll take it in PPR leagues. But, I mean, like, I think this is just kind of what we can expect from the Bucks most weeks. I mean, they're just going to – the defense is bad, and, and it's just going to be – they're just going to have to score a lot of points to keep up. So the offense should be pretty good each week, right? Yeah, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, what what Winston you get, you know. Um, I mean, yeah. I guess I would chalk this up as a good as a good Winston day because um, usually his bad ones are, you know, three, four interceptions. So, yes, uh, you know, this is about what you expected to get from the Bucks. I would say, today. Um, so I, I think if, you know, you were in on the Bucks, you weren't disappointed, but they didn't, you know, exceed your expectations. You just got what you're thinking you're going to get. Yeah, on the Seahawks side here, Wilson was incredible, three seventy eight and five touchdowns. Um, Lockett had two, Metcalf had one. I don't know, some random dude at the end caught the game winning touchdown. I don't even know what his name was. Um, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, so I mean, Lockett was a beast. You know, I think one of the more surprising things is that you know the Bucks can obviously be had in the air but i think because of that like teams just a don't run on them and they're actually kind of stout up front uh but carson ran for over 100 yards so that was pretty surprising but i mean anything really to to take from this i mean any i don't know i mean it's just a good game i mean i don't know now it's very similar to the bucks um it was basically what you expected um I mean, you did get a little bit more out of Wilson than I think you would have planned on. Um, five touchdowns, you're, you're never going to bank on that. But no, I don't think – I wasn't in on Carson at all this week, so I don't, I don't know who really was, you know, DFS-wise at least. But um, I think if you have him in your season long, you weren't going to sit him today. Nope. Um, but I don't think you were necessarily expecting him to break 100 yards. No, no, I wasn't. I was probably expecting more along the lines of like you know fifty, sixty yards, and maybe a touchdown because he'll get in the red zone. He'll you know he'll he'll just be able to run it in. But you know, I'll take the hundred yards, sure. Uh, Broncos, Browns, Broncos win the game with their backup quarterback. Man, twenty four to nineteen. Oh, how. It, it's just, it's gotten bad in Cleveland, man. I don't. This is such a talented team, and I have no idea what's going wrong. I, I can't imagine this coach is going to last much longer. Um, it's just it can't it can't happen, dude. This team's too talented for them to play this bad. Uh, Mayfield two seventy three and a touchdown. Chubb held to sixty five rushing yards. Odell five for eighty seven. Like it's just it's not great, man. And I just I don't know what to do with this team. Like they're they're besides Chubb, honestly, like they're hard to trust in your season long leagues with any of these other guys. With, yeah, I with, mean, I, it's a tough matchup against a good defense. You know, on top of the fact that obviously they've been struggling. Um, I mean, I, I expected a little bit more from Chubb today than than what we got, but I mean, you know, it's not going to put up a hundred and. X number of yards and a touch every single week. So, 
Um, I, yeah, it's, I think it's one of those situations where if you have Chubb in any fashion, obviously you 100% trust him. I don't know how you sit Odell, I guess, at this point. Um, I mean, if you were ever going to sit Odell Beckham, I guess this was the week unless, you know, unless they, you know, were to be going against the Patriots and Gilmore. I mean, I, I would consider Harris and Gilmore, maybe Lattimore to be, you know, your, your shutdown matchup changing corners. So, I mean, I guess maybe you could have sat Odell this week, but I think five for 87 is probably about as good as you were going to hope that he would have this week, sadly. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sitting Odell in 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 season long leagues for sure, but you you know that's you you're not getting the return on the draft value there at all for him, so that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the Broncos side, Brandon Allen, man, well, look, not great, but he played within his limits and he did well. 193 yards and two touchdowns, uh, 115 of those and a touchdown went to Noah Fant, so big game for him. Uh, Sutton was was solid as well, 556 and a touchdown. So, um, you know, those of you who had to roll the dice on him this week because of bye weeks and injuries, you know, you're you're loving it. Um, Lindsey, though, this is this is where I wanted to go. Is this running game, right? So, you know, it's we thought they'd go heavy run because they have a backup quarterback, and they kind of did. But uh, you know, Lindsey had nine, um, and Freeman. Had how many touches? Five, like, oh, I think he had like five carries. Five carries, yeah. So actually, not not as not as heavy run as I expected, but um, but Lindsey, man, like he just like once again looks like the better option here, but he's just not getting all the work, unfortunately. You know, ninety-two yards and a touchdown. Uh, I I mean I don't think at this point I and mean, it's week nine where we can't expect them just to kind of flip the switch and go to one full time, but you know unless there's an injury, but you just kind of wish they would, right? I mean, yeah, if you're a Lindsay owner, you sure do. Um, I mean, I I don't know that anyone legitimately you know hopes for someone to get hurt, but you know if either one of them did, and, and again we've talked about this before. If any one of those guys gets hurt, um, you know, they, they both can run the ball. They both can catch the ball. Um, I mean, Lindsay's a better runner. Freeman's mm-hmm. a better receiver, but they both can do it. So, if you know, if they had, you know, Josh Jacobs or Le'Veon Bell type touches, I think they would – either one of them could be elite, especially Lindsay. Yeah. Yeah, it's – um, yeah, it, it's – I mean – and they're both producing, so like you know, you kind of you kind of put them in there in the like running back three territory, kind of flex type of guys, and, and just kind of roll with what you get. I, I will be keeping an eye on Noah Fant. Like I'm not going to go rush out and be like, oh my god, I got to get Noah Fant now. But like you know, if I'm if I'm one of those teams who's been decimated at tight end, you know, maybe I'll take a chance on him and just hope that you know Brandon Allen, a, a pretty raw quarterback, is going to rely on uh, rely on a tight end here um, more often than not. So. We're, we're taking a stab out here. The last game we got Chargers Packers. The Bolts take this one, twenty six to eleven. Rogers, ugh, it wasn't good, man. One hundred sixty one yards and a touchdown. And Devontae Adams came back too, so like it was even more surprising. I think people were like real hyped to get Devontae Adams back in the mix and see what this offense does. And it just wasn't. It just wasn't good, man. Like they were just off their game and. I mean, this was coming off of like two pretty monster games for Rodgers in a row, so pretty shocking to see this. I mean, it, we just taking this as like an outlier, or you, you know, any concerns here? I guess is what I meant to ask. I mean, not really. Um, I mean, you're gonna have games like this every now and again. Um, kind of a weird spot, I guess, to you know have it against um, the Chargers, but you know you you don't always know when those things are going to pop up. So, um, I mean, if anything, you know, good to get everyone healthy on the field. If you're, you know, a Packers fan or, you know, you own these guys, but yeah, I don't know how many games you're going to see again with, you know, Rogers under 200 and Jones under 50 yards receive and, you know, under 50 yards rushing and Adams under 50 yards receiving. So yeah, I definitely think that this was just one of those games. Yeah, and then on the on the Chargers side here, um, you know, R- Rivers good yardage total, just under three hundred, but no touchdowns. Um, 
Melvin Gordon finally had a good game. 20 carries, 80 yards, two touchdowns. Was involved in the passing game a little bit for four targets. Caught three for 29. Eckler kind of took you know a back seat to him this game. 12, 12 carries for 70 yards himself. Just didn't get in the end zone. And then he also caught all four of his targets for 23 yards. So both both pretty productive days. Uh, Gordon just a little bit better, obviously, because of the touchdowns. But, um, you know, is this kind of the the signal that Gordon's kind of back and he's he's ready to take this this backfield back over again? Or I don't know that he will necessarily have that opportunity, though. Um, I mean, Eckler's Eckler's good, man. So yes, he is. I mean, that, that that team is is really. You know, in a in a you know similar situation, I guess to Denver, only Gordon and Eckler are are both better than those other two guys. You know, because um, I mean Eckler is a much better receiver than what mm-hmm. Freeman is. I mean, you know, you look at Jalen Samuels, and Jalen Samuels had an Eckler game. You know, and then Gordon, obviously, we know he can he can run the ball. So um, if they were to really decide to focus on those two guys, I could see them both being productive, but. I mean, they've got Hunter Henry. They've got Keenan Allen, who don't forget Keenan Allen is one of the top five most talented receivers in football. Um, and then you got my guy, Mike Williams, who almost had a day today. Oh, um, man. You're so, going to keep calling it. It's going to happen one of these days. <laughs> so, I mean, you've got a Hall of Fame quarterback. You've got two Pro Bowl running backs. you got a Pro Bowl tight end. you got an all-pro wide receiver. you got, you know, Mike Williams. I mean – everyone is not going to be able to go crazy every week. It, it's going to just kind of depend on either their game plan, um, mm-hmm. their opponent or health. So it, it's frustrating again that, you know, you've got another team that has five guys who all could just be elite at their position and they've all got to share, you know? <laughs> yeah. This is definitely a, a talented offense and it's weird to see them struggle like they have this year so right. far. So all right, man. Well, that's all we got for the week. Um, watching here, thirty to twenty, Baltimore right now with eleven minutes to go in the fourth. So, I don't know, man. It's looking good for uh, the Ravens to finally put a notch in the loss column for the Patriots. So, all right, well, everybody, hope you had a good week, and catch you on next week.